Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, and today we'll be doing an unboxing and review video for the 1-6 scale Ghost of Battlefield figure by VTS Toys, which is yet another unlicensed release typical of this hobby, this time based on Jin Sakai as they appeared in Ghost of Tsushima. I'll also cover the extra goodies that came with the deluxe version. I am not your son. I am the ghost. Ghost of Tsushima by Sucker Punch stands peerless as one of the most riveting and affectionate homages to the samurai genre. The journey of the protagonist, Jin Sakai, who is torn between forsaking his values as a samurai and rising up as a symbol to inspire his people, is nothing short of poetic. Released in 2021, I was supposed to get this enormous box over Christmas, but due to shipping complications, I had to wait till February to get my hands on this. For the head sculpt, I'd say that, in broad strokes, the likeness to Jin is pretty good. The hair sculpt, goatee, and scar by his left cheek are all right where they should be. But as a strict one-to-one -one comparison, I still feel there's a slight gap between this portrait and the in-game model. But going even further, if you compare the sculpt to Daisuke Tsuji, the actor who played Jin himself, the resemblance is definitely there. This ghost mask is an interesting attachment. It's very symbolic of Jin's personification of the ghosts, and VTS acknowledges its importance by nailing the sculpting and paint app, even for the underside of the mask. Yet you might notice the intricate knot system around the chin is missing. Instead of strapping by Jin's ears like in the game, the rope goes around the back of his head. It certainly works, but this trade-off between screen accuracy and an organically composed costume is gonna be a recurring design choice for this figure. So here we go. What we have here is the basis for the ghost armor at its level 2 upgrade. As far as I can tell, the body armor is made of plastic, but it's still very sturdy, though it's really the intricate pieces on top that are stealing the show. These delicate rope systems, fabric sashes, spalders on each shoulder, metallic fan braces with even more chains and ropes, and fabric gauntlets with metal handguards are features that absolutely overwhelm the looks and feel of this figure. The quiz is made of two layers, an outer layer that's individually strung together from many die-cast pieces, and an inner cloth layer with wired linings, embellished with even more tiny metal platings. The pants are folded in layers, which you can expand to better match how Jin wears it in-game, and the griefs are once again die-cast, with these green straps that are manually applied. For these sculpted sandals, the armors that came on the top side with the level 2 upgrade are strangely missing, but that's just more nitpicking from me, because these otherwise look pretty good. And it's here where we encounter the first difference between the normal and deluxe costumes. On the left is the level 2 ghost armor, which is available for both versions. On the right is the deluxe exclusive level 3 ghost armor, as characterized by the jacket and a longer mantle. The scarf is used in both setups, and it's actually pretty big. I rolled it up to make it as slim as possible, but even then, it's still got too much fabric compared to the game. The level 2 cloak is beautifully tattered, with a wired lining that's perfect for these blustery poses, especially when wind is such a powerful motif in Ghost of Tsushima. The patterns and weathering on this level 3 jacket did not go amiss, and it's also got a wired lining around the collar. This level 3 mantle is accurately not as tattered, and like everything else, the level 3 setup is applied in the most organic way possible, which will require you to undo a few straps along the way. I personally prefer the level 2 setup, because you can see a little bit more of the base armor, but let's be real, either setup looks hands down amazing. With all that said, however, I'd like to point out that, because of VTS's decision to recreate the armor so authentically, they have inadvertently made the armor a little tough to navigate, along with leaving behind a number of inaccuracies. For instance, the metal armors on the shoulders had each taken a turn just falling right off, and that's just from me accidentally grazing my fingers past them. I had some mild success putting them back together with some fabric glue, but do keep an eye out for yours, as tiny pieces like these are very easy to lose. These hemp ropes by the chest and waist are also much thicker than how they appeared in-game. And while fussing with this green fabric strap in the middle, this knot actually came loose a few times. And the same goes for these straps by the griefs, which I might add, are much wider than their in-game counterpart. The ropes and chains on the left fan brace are also just a scrambled mess compared to the game. And lastly, the gauntlets mount on the hands by these elastic bands. Again, very authentic, but they do require a lot of diligence when swapping out the hand parts as to not wear out the bands. And the end result is that there could be a lot of friction just to get Jin into a desired pose. So so depending on your preference for screen accuracy and how willing you are to spend the time to work around all these tiny details, the experience of this figure can fluctuate widely between collectors.
But in any case, the articulations are fairly decent, considering how restrictive the armor appears. There's the usual side-to-side -side head swing, with a very limited up and down swing, which is typical of a VTS release. The arms can extend reasonably far before the fabric starts tugging, and this applies to the arm swivel and outswing as well. The elbows can bend to about 90 degrees, but that's enough for the spalders and fan braces to clash, so do be careful with that. The wrist joints are unhindered thanks to the fabric gauntlets. The torso twist is excellent, but the ab crunch is understandably hampered. And due to the flexible composition of the quiz, Jin's articulations are fantastic from the pelvis down. The greaves are also clear of the ankle and knee movements. So all in all, Jin's locked out of the stances that might require extreme arm movements. But what he can do in moderation is still nothing to scoff at. As for the accessories, both versions start with a set of swords, with the longest one being Jin's primary weapon, known as the Sakai Katana. The shortest one is known as a Tanto, which Jin used for close-range assassinations. As far as I'm aware, the sword in the middle was not used at all. It's just an aesthetic of the ghost armor, suggesting that Jin is straying farther from his path as a samurai and descending into that of a shinobi. In any case, the details on the sheaths, hilts, and the metallic blades are all brilliant. Next is this half bow, which Jin is uh, borrowing from Ishikawa Sensei. It's complete with all the sculpted details, a plastic tassel, and a stretchy bowstring. Then we have two sets of arrows. First is this yellow one, which is just your standard arrow in the game, followed by the armor-piercing heavy arrow. They're all made of metal and are very rigid, and this heft makes the archery poses very grounded. Then we have some ghost weapons, starting with a black powder bomb on the left, and a sticky bomb on the right. I actually quite like the details on both, but I had a lot more fun posing with the kunais. The version on the left has a peg that mounts to Jin's armor, but once they're removed, the gaping sockets on the armor are pretty obvious, so I like to use these with the level 3 armor setup. Next is this beautiful shakuhachi, which is an heirloom from Jin's deceased mother. This bamboo flute has a mysterious power that can alter the weather. And finally, we have some deluxe exclusive accessories, starting with this fox statue, which is an excellent choice by VTS. It's got a set of gleaming red eyes, with the sculpted texture to mimic the furry look. Next is this absolutely massive base with a velvety bottom, complete with a bunch of set pieces, one of which is a Sashimono banner, bearing the clan Sakai crest. Though Jin's clan color should be more black than blue, but either ways, it's an amazing backdrop, especially when you put everything together. Along with the details on the armor, this display base grants this mere action figure the caliber of a quality statue. For the size comparison, I thought it'd be fun to bust out some of VTS's old releases, such as Seikiro from his own titular action adventure, and channel veteran Cloud from FF7 Remake. The heights for Jin and Sekiro are never officially confirmed, but Jin stands at around 12 inches tall, which I am totally on board with. Next, we have an unlicensed Musashi from Vagabond, which was made by Kai in Eleven. Historically, these two would have missed each other by over a century, but I'm glad that Jin will be joining his ranks as a samurai in my collection. So there you have it, the 1-6 scale Jin Sakai by VTS Toys. Personally, the inaccurate details were far from the first thing that I noticed whenever I look at this figure. Instead, I was mesmerized by the fact that I can just stare into a random part of the costume and find that there's so much more than meets the eye. This release was an ambitious undertaking, just like the game that inspired it, and Jin is easily one of VTS's best figures to date. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.